Hello everyone and welcome to Clarity PPM 15.7 New Task Hierarchy Timeline Overview. So what's new in 15.7? So in 15.7 we are introducing the New Task Hierarchy Timeline Overview. This is in addition to the existing uh, task view that you would get which would be the grid view, the board view, um, as well as the old task list where you could see the tasks with just one uh, subtask underneath it. This new timeline will show you multiple sublevels. This is uh, color coded, which means the users can specify uh, how they would like to see the timeline data. Um, essentially, you can specify tasks that are overdue, underdue. You can have your own pick list and color code the values that are in the timeline view itself. The users can also configure the timeline view and save it as a regular view, just like uh, you can do that in other parts of uh, Clarity PPM. So however configuration you've defined, you can save that as a view. Why is this new timeline important? Customers have been asking us for a long time as to how they can uh, be able to see the multiple levels that they have defined uh, for tasks in the modern UX. So as you know, prior to 15.7, uh, customers uh, using modern UX could either see all the tasks in a grid view or they could see the task in the task list view, which will list the top level task and just one task underneath it. So only two levels of tasks were shown. Starting 15.7, we have addressed that by providing a new uh, timeline view that is available in the modern UX. So what has changed in 15.7? customers that will go into a project task will now see a new icon appear in the task module, which is for the timeline view. This new icon, which would be the first on the list right after filter, is what you can click to to see your task in a timeline format. You can see your task as a, as a list on the left and you can see your task uh, represented in, in, uh, in a timeline format on the timeline view. You can also see the dependencies between each one of the tasks that are listed in here. And you have the option to filter the data so that if you are looking for a certain task, then only that uh, filter task will be displayed in your view. You can visually see and adjust the tasks that are displayed in here. So the timeline view is interactable where you can perform different uh, functions or actions against it. So let's look a little bit more detail as to what each one of the different areas represent and what are the um, the, the syntax for each one of these uh, the displayed uh, values. So going from the two different panes, the left pane is the WBS section. This is where you would see all your tasks. Uh, and if there are summary tasks, you will be able to see uh, those as well as their subtasks right here. If you have multiple levels within a summary task, you will see all of those levels within the WBS section. The right is your timeline section. This is where you will see the, the same corresponding task as a, a timeline bar uh, representing its, its length, representing the duration of that specific task. Going across, you would see the plus icon, which is the standard for being able to create a new task in the WBS section. You would also see a three dot icon, which is for action items. So any actions that can be performed in the timeline view is going to be listed right here, right? And right now specifically those actions uh, include being able to open this up in MSP or in Open Workbench. Specifically for the milestone section, 
each one of these uh, represent different uh, types of tasks. For example, uh, a bar that is just color coded and is a regular rectangle indicates that it is a regular task. This right here represents a summary task, indicating that the summary task has these two tasks underneath it and it expands this much duration. The milestones are indicated as a diamond. And these lines between the different tasks indicate dependencies. And the direction and the location of these arrows indicates the type of dependency and we'll cover that a little bit more in detail later but the uh, in in general the type of dependency i'm talking about if it is a start to finish finish to finish uh, and so on so what type of dependencies there between the tasks as you click an individual task you will get the details icon which when you click on will give you the fly out where additional task information is available. Uh, this is a standard component, which means you can configure the fly out to have whichever attributes you want to see. And you can then save that as a view. In addition, you also get the view option, which is where you can specify uh, the time period you want to see. You can specify um, how you want the task in the timeline view to be color coded. So talking a little bit more about the, um, the view options, as you can see going top to bottom, you get to see the periods for your timeline view. You can specify in weeks, months, quarter, or yearly, depending those time periods have been defined in your system. You can define uh, what color or how should the timeline um, task within the timeline be displayed using which color options, and that's the attribute that you can pick. If the task uh, has too many dependencies and uh, the view could get very convoluted, and you want to hide those dependencies from the view, then you can use this checkbox right here to, uh, if you, when you unselect it, the dependencies will be hidden from the view. Of course, we will maintain the dependency uh, uh, in the system, but we will just not display it. And then the last on the screen is the, um, the pick list where you can define uh, either your existing pick list or you can create a brand new pick list that can be used for your timeline view. Because it is using a common grid component, you also have the, the views itself. You can essentially pick these different options and save it as a view. And then you can change such as if you want to have a view for month, a view for quarterly, and then have it color coded based on different criteria, you can have those different options and then just save it as a specific view. The timeline view also has the filter options. So if you are trying to look for a specific task or a specific category of tasks, you can do that using the filter option. Like I'd mentioned, Clicking on a specific task will give you the details uh, flyout. When you click on the detail flyouts, you get all the same different options within uh, the detail, which include conversations, to-do list, the teams, details, and links. Under the details, you can leverage the two-column flyout configuration. You can add any uh, task attribute to your flyout. You can uh, remove any of those and arrange the layout in two columns. And once that is done so, you can save it in your view. Any changes made to the flyout is obviously automatically reflected in your uh, WBS and the timeline section of your timeline view. You can do different types of interactions against the um, tasks in your timeline view, such as 
hovering over a specific task will display you the date and time for that specific task. You can drag a specific task to change its duration, which is by dragging one of the two ends. You can drag the task to change its start and finish dates, which means the whole task is shifted. You can uh, select a dependency and delete it, or you can add a dependency between uh, different tasks. The types of dependency you can add is, of course, the start to finish, finish to finish, start to start, finish to start. That dependency is determined based on how you link the two tasks. For example, if I link the end of this first task to the start of the second task, then it'll create a finish to start dependency. Similarly, if I would have created a dependency from the start of this to the start of this, it would have created a start to start dependency. You can also interact with the WBS section and there is a menu option that comes up when you perform a right mouse click on any specific task in the WBS section. By performing the right mouse click, you will see a menu come up that says insert a new task as a sibling of the selected task. You can select a task as a child to the selected task or you can just delete the selected task. If you don't want to use the right mouse click, you can still use the plus icon, which is located on the top of the screen. That plus icon will insert a new task at the top of your WBS. So right on top, it'll get, it'll insert a brand new task and you can then populate its respective information. You can also drag and drop a task from one summary task to another summary task. And uh, that is just done so by selecting it and just dragging it across uh, from one to the other. So with that, let's jump into seeing this in action. So I am here in my Clarity system, which uh, is 15.7, and I'm gonna go into my project and under the project, I am going to go into my tasks. So as you can notice that now I have these three view icons and the new icon is right here, which is my timeline icon. Coming in here, I can see my WBS section. I can see my timeline section and I see the rest of the common components, such as the ability to save a view if I select a specific task, I get the details and I can configure the details by adding and removing any uh, fields that I would like. The three dot action menu is right here. It gives me the option to open this either in MSP, Open Workbench or open the original PPM Gantt. I can interact with the WBS section by either dragging my task and that will increase my task. I can increase its duration. In this case, it increased based on the other dependencies. I can just by hovering over, see my start and finish date. And I can either drag and drop the, uh, just the duration itself by just dragging and dropping the, the end of a specific task. In order to build the relationship, I can just hover over towards the end and I can then just drag over the dependency line and then drop it to wherever I want to build a relationship. So in this example, I'm building a relationship as a finish of the start to the start of the next task. To create a new task, I can of course use the plus icon or I can do a right mouse click and use the new menu icon. So thereby doing a right mouse click on a specific task, in this case, the summary task, I see 
three options available to me. I can either insert a sibling, which means I'll create another task at the same level as this one. Or I can insert a child, which means in, it'll create a new task underneath this right here. Or I can just delete this task itself. So let's create a new child for my initiation phase. And there is my task. I can go into the details and specify additional information, such as I'm going to call this as scope definition. I can specify uh, a certain date that this is going to run for two months. I can specify additional information, but uh, this should be good for now. And you can see that the new task is created. In my case, it was created towards the end of my time period. So I can drag this over. To a different time in case I'm bringing it towards the end of uh, the year. I can also, if I wanted to use different types of color coding, I can go into the view options. I see months as my periods. I can change this into um, quarters or years or weeks, depending on if all of these have been defined in my system. I can pick a different uh, category color. In this case, uh, I have already picked a category, but I could have picked anything else. Or if I wanted to create a new one, I can just go into manage pick list. I can create a new pick list. Let's just call it as scope items. And I can then define different uh, choices underneath them and color code each one of those. And assign these values to my respective task and then use those as my new color scheme for my uh, task within my timeline view. Thank you, everyone.